Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Be Healed Global Christian Church this morning. We are going to go before the Lord and enter into a time of prayer and intercession. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Psalm uh, 34. Psalm 34, verse 1 through 3. The Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My love makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble and afflicted hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. So let us exalt the name of the Lord this morning together, wherever you are in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you, Father, for this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Father, because you are God and beside you there's no other. There's no rock that we know not of one. You are from everlasting to everlasting. We exalt your name this morning in the name of Jesus. Your name is greater to be praised in all the earth. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Father, we worship you this morning. We glorify you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We give you all the majesty. We give you all the dominion. Holy are you, Lord, from everlasting to everlasting, from generation to generation. You are still God. You reign forever and ever. We exalt your holy name this morning. We exalt you, Father God, because you are good. And everything that you do is good, Father. In the name of Jesus, we exalt your name because you are Jehovah. Your covenant name that you made with us, for you said you not leave us nor forsake us. We exalt your holy name this morning because you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We exalt your holy name because you are Jehovah Rapha, our healer. We thank you for healing us of all our diseases. We exalt your name because you are Jehovah Sidkenu, our righteousness. We thank you for making us the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, we exalt your holy name, Jehovah Shalom, our Prince of Peace. We thank you, Father, for the peace that we, we, we partake of daily in the name of Jesus. Oh, we bless your holy name. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the majesty and the dominion. We thank you, Jesus, this morning. Thank you for shedding your blood on Calvary. We thank you that by your stripes we are healed, we are delivered, we are set free. Oh, we thank you, Spirit of the living God. We acknowledge your presence this morning. Have your way in this place. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. We are going to go before the Lord and ask, ask God for uh, forgiveness of our sins. We are going to repent of any sin that we might have in, we might, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, anything, any sin that is in us and anything that is not of God in our lives. Amen. Let's go to Acts chapter 8, please. Acts chapter 8. Acts 8, verse 21 to 23, the Bible says, You have neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is all wrong in God's sight. It is not straightforward or right or true before God. So repent of this depravity and wickedness of yours, and pray to the Lord that, if possible, this contriving thought and purpose of your heart may be removed and dis disregarded and forgiven you. Amen. Amen. And God also gives us a promise in 1 John chapter uh, 9. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 he says that if we are confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So right now let's go before the Lord and just repent of our hearts that are not that are not right with God. Repent of any wickedness that is in our heart. Repent of evil thoughts and evil speaking, envies and jealousies. Repent right now and ask God to release you from bitterness and iniquity in the name of Jesus. Father, this morning I come before you to ask for mercy and forgiveness of all my sins, my thoughts, my words, my deeds. I ask for mercy this morning in the name of Jesus. I repent, Father God, for my heart not being right with you. I repent Father God for any wickedness that is in my heart. I repent Father for evil thoughts and evil speaking in the name of Jesus. I repent Father of envies and jealousies that I may be harboring in my heart. I ask for mercy this morning in the name of Jesus. I ask you to forgive me from every sin of commission and omission, sins of ignorance and sins of thoughtlessness in the name of Jesus. Oh God
God, have mercy this morning. Have mercy on me. God, I ask for release this morning from bitterness and iniquity in the name of Jesus from wickedness. Lord, I ask you to forgive me this morning. Wash me and cleanse me with the precious blood of Jesus that I may be whiter than snow in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you because you are faithful and just to forgive my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I thank you that I receive my forgiveness now by faith in the name of Jesus. For sin shall no longer have dominion over me. For I'm not under the law, but I'm under the blood of Jesus. Therefore, this morning, Lord, I present all my members as instruments of righteousness in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. We are going to release the power of the, of the blood of Jesus. Because the blood of Jesus has power to save, power to deliver, power to justify, power to sanctify, power to heal, power to give life, power to pardon sin, power to reconcile us back to God, power to bring victory, yes. power to bring redemption, yes. power to open doors that the enemy might have closed. Yes. Amen. Yes. When we go to Hebrews chapter 12 verse 4. Hebrews 12 verse 4, the NIV version of the Bible says, In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. But it was only he who resisted sin unto blood. It was only Jesus who resisted, uh, uh, unto, resisted sin unto blood. This is according to Romans 5 verse 9. So therefore we know that this blood of Jesus gives us victory in every situation of our lives. So right now, let's begin to plead the blood of Jesus over every situation, every circumstance right now in the name of Jesus. Father, this morning I thank you for the precious blood of Jesus, the blood that delivers, the blood that sets free, the blood that washes whiter than snow, the blood that sanctifies and justifies, the blood that brings redemption. We thank you for the precious blood of Jesus. Lord, we cover ourselves this morning in the blood of Jesus. We cover our families in the blood. We cover our ministries, businesses, careers in the blood of Jesus. Lord, we cover our nations, our cities, our states in the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the precious blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Let the blood speak peace over our families. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for the blood. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Spirit of the living God. Blessed be your glorious name forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. We are going to pray this morning according to Jude 20. Jude 20, the Bible tells us, Amen. Amen. We are supposed to pray in our most holy faith. Amen. Amen. Praying in the spirit. So as we are going to pray in the spirit this morning, we're going to use this prayer point. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16. The Bible says, may he grant you out of the rich treasury of your glory, of his glory, to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself indwelling your innermost being and personality. Amen. So we're going to ask the Holy Spirit this morning to strengthen our inner man, to strengthen us, uh, that spirit man, to strengthen our conscience. Amen. So that we'll be able to pray in diverse tongues. We'll be able to pray in the different dimensions of tongues. Amen. So right now, this morning, begin to pray as you ask the Holy Spirit, begin to pray in that in, in, the, in, the, in the heavenly language right now in the name of Jesus Father this morning I come before you I ask you spirit of the living God to strengthen and reinforce my inner man with mighty power in the name of Jesus that I may be able to pray in diverse tongues that I may be able to pray in different dimensions of tongues in the name of Jesus Reke 
Totara mande reke ro mande reke reke second re re ko ko ta ya da ra mande re beke re mande re te ye ro mande reke se de ke ro mande re re se ke she de ke to ra re ke ko sa ta she re ke ko ta ta ya kan de re be se de ye ke to ro mande re re ke to te ra mande ra ye ko ta ya strengthen us this morning spirit of the living God re de ke to re ke se ke de strengthen our inner man re ke to se te ke Totaya, Redeke Kotataya, Mamande Reketo Sedeya, Remande Rede Kota, Ndara Doketa, Remande Reko de Teseteya, Mama Reke Kotese Tete Kokata, Remande Keko Tete, Terroseke, Remakande Reketo, Remande Reba Sataya, Reketo Sete, Kokota Taya Katata, Ramande Rebe Seteya, Reketo Reba Casa de Ramande Reba Sata, Rekeko Tete, Reke. Kota tara mande re besse shiriaka ngara mande re kote ya katete re te kesse te ya kata ya ndere bete ya sata ya o re kesse shiria saka ndere ke re mande re ke to re ke te ya sata ya ndere ko tata ya o re be kesse she kesse in the name of Jesus in Jesus name we have prayed with thanksgiving amen amen and amen Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're now going to enter into a time of praise and worship. Amen. Hallelujah. There is no one like our God. Amen. He reigns. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. There is no one like Him. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, hey, hey. Our God is great and glorious. We put our trust in your name, Jesus. Able to save and deliver us. We put our hope in your name, Jesus. Blessing and honor, glory and power unto our God forever and ever. All of the honor, all of the praise.
and the Lord of Lords. You are the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation. Now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a beautiful name it is nothing compares to this what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus oh Lord
thank you. Hallowed be your name. That beautiful name, that powerful name, that wonderful name. There's nothing like you, oh God. None can compare. No one can come close. Father, we thank you. Oh Lord, you alone are God. You alone are mighty. Amen. Yeah, Father, we thank you. For your name is above all names. And that name, oh God, we run to and are saved. It is in that name that we find healing. It is in that name that we find solace. It is in that name that we find comfort, oh God. And Lord God, you give us a name because of your name. And we honor you, Lord. We worship you. We give you praise.
thank you, O oh God. We exalt your name, Lord. We magnify who you are, for you are good, and your love endures forever, Lord. You are good, and your love endures forever. Thank you for your name. Thank you for your grace, O oh God. We bless your name. Hallowed be your name, O oh God. Hallowed be your name, Lord. Hallowed be your name. There is none like you. Hallowed be your name, Lord. That name that is above every name. That name in whom we come and are safe. That name to whom we tremble. That name to whom we give awesome glory to. Lord God, hallowed be your name. We worship you this evening, this morning, Lord God. We thank you for your mercy. Hallelujah. Glory be to your name, O oh Lord. We give you praise. We give you honor. Let's turn our Bibles real quickly to Romans chapter, Romans chapter 8, please. Romans chapter 8. While we are still in this mode of worship, Romans chapter 8, that's what I meant to say. Romans chapter 8. The Bible tells us, Oh, Rabosa. The Bible says in, I'll start reading actually from verse 18 because it's talking about a glorious destiny. It says, I'm convinced that any suffering we endure is less than nothing compared to the magnitude of glory that is about to be unveiled within us. The entire universe is standing on tiptoe, yearning to see the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters. For against its will, the universe itself has to endure the empty futility uh, resulting from the consequences of human sin. But now with eager expectation, all creation longs for freedom for, from its slavery to decay and to experience with us the wonderful freedom coming to God's children. Listen to that. The wonderful freedom coming to God's children. To this day, we are aware of the universal agony and groaning of creation as if it were to the country, as if it were in the contractions Yay. of labor for childbirth. And it is not just creation. We who have already experienced the first fruits of the spirit also inwardly groan as we passionately long to experience all our full status as God's sons and daughters, including our physical bodies being transformed. For this is the hope of yes. our salvation. But hope means that we must, listen, hope means that we must trust and wait for what is still unseen. For why would we need to hope for something we already have? Hallelujah. So because our hope is set on what is is yet to be seen we patiently keep on waiting for yes. its fulfillment and in a similar way in a similar way the holy spirit takes hold of us mm -hmm. in our human frailty to empower us yes. in our weakness hallelujah for example at times we don't even know how to pray yes. or know the best things to ask for yes. but the holy spirit rises up within oh. us to super intercede on our behalf pleading to god with emotional sighs too deep for words yes. god the searcher of the heart knows fully our longings yet he also understands the desires of the spirit because the holy spirit passionately pleads before god for us his holy ones in perfect harmony with god's plan and our destiny so we are convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven together to fit in god's perfect yes. plan of bringing good into our lives yes. for we are his lovers who have been called to fulfill Hallelujah. his designed yes. purpose you know the reason why i'm saying this is because as we were singing as reverend pauline was singing 
you know, you know, and, and we're in worship. I began to just, I was praying. The Holy Spirit just took me up, stirred in my spirit, and I began to pray in the spirit, and then I stopped praying in tongues, and I was just groaning, and I was sighing, and I was groaning, and I was sighing, and I was trying to get out of the sighing and just going, uh, uh, and, and I was trying to get back into praying in tongues, and the Holy Spirit said, don't stop that, because right there, I'm actually pleading through you as I'm going, uh, 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 uh. And I'm telling you, there's some of you right now who are just going, uh, 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 uh. the Holy Spirit is sighing through you. Let's pray in the Spirit. Even if I, even if you're sighing, even if you're going groaning, that's the Holy Spirit praying through you. Behalf and is going to God with 
your prayers too deep for words. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, in your weakness, amen. And the Holy Spirit passionately pleads on your behalf, amen. He stands before God pleading on your behalf, on the behalf of his holy ones, in perfect harmony with God's plan and our destiny. The perfect will of God. He's praying the perfect will of God for our lives. Hallelujah. So you can pray in the Spirit, but also if you are led of the Holy Spirit in that time when you're now praying, deep praying, praying deep prayers which are groans and sighs. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, people of God, don't despise those. You don't know what you're praying for, who you're praying for. You know, in that time, in that hour, Mm, do not stop and say, oh, I'm just sighing. I'm just, no, don't despise that. The Holy Spirit is using you in that hour. Amen. Amen. You might be praying for yourself. You might be praying for future things that haven't even arrived yet on the scene. Hallelujah. So, you know, prayer knows no distance. When we say that, we're not saying that it doesn't know distance because you're praying for somebody who's far away. Prayer knows no distance, meaning that prayer doesn't, you know, stop because the future isn't here. Prayer goes into your future to pray for things that haven't arrived yet. And prayer can fix things that are in the future that are not aligned with God's will and purpose for your life before they arrive. Hallelujah. So prayer knows no distance. Prayer can go 20 years ahead of you and fix things that the enemy is trying to mess up for your life that are not lined up with the will and purposes of God. That's why praying in the spirit is so important because the devil doesn't know what you're praying about. The, the praying in the spirit messes up, you know, the devil's plans and it untangles things that are in your future. Ooh, pray, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you. We just glorify you. We just magnify you because of who you are. We are so blessed to know you, Lord. We are so blessed yes. to be your children, oh Lord yes. God. We are so thankful to you, Jesus, yes. for what you did, the ultimate sacrifice that you made on the cross. Oh, we are so blessed to be chosen by you, Lord God. We are so thankful yes. for the day, Lord, that you chose us, that you picked us out and said, come into the kingdom. We say, thank you, Father. Thank you for blessing us, Lord God. Oh, we are so grateful to you, Father. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. Blessed be your holy name. Oh, we exalt you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We give you all. We give you all of us, Lord God. Have your way in our lives, Lord. Let your will, your purposes for our lives be done. Have your way in us, Lord. Have your way in us, Holy Spirit. Take full control of our lives. Have your way in us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, blessed be your name. Spirit of the living God, we thank you that you are with us. You will never leave us. You will never forsake us. You never let us down. And even now as we sit at your feet to receive this infallible word, to receive instruction for this week, we are so grateful. We thank you for opening our eyes to see what you're saying to us, opening our ears to hear you clearly so that we might know what to do in this coming week. We thank you that you have brought us to this last day of this month of February. You have kept us, watched over us, provided for us, given us strategies to bring us to this moment. We are so grateful. We say thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're unlocking our minds to give us understanding, unlocking our minds so that we might receive revelation of the scriptures. Oh, we are so grateful. Thank you for giving us understanding. Oh, thank you for granting us wisdom. Oh, we pray, we praise you. We bless you. Oh, oh Lord God, I'm just so thankful to you. I am so thankful to you for even allowing me to stand here to serve you, Lord. 
I bless you. I glorify you. I magnify you, Lord. I can't say it enough, Lord. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. Oh, Holy Spirit, thank you for preparing our hearts this morning to receive this word. And we thank you that our hearts are good ground. We are not just hearers of this word, but we are doers of it. Yes. And we purpose to do this word. We are committed to doing this word. Yes. This word is not falling on deaf ears. This word is not falling on hard ground. This word is falling on good ground. This seed, which is the word of God, is falling on good ground. Yes, and this Lord. ground will produce a good harvest, hundredfold return. We say thank you. We decree it. We declare it. And it shall be so. For your word says decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. And so we decree it. We declare it. And we thank you that it is done. It is settled. It is concluded in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. To God be the glory. Are you excited today about the word of God? Amen. 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 Because I know that, amen, we are going into the land to possess it. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Well, last week we began talking about, you know, activating the covenant of promises. And remember, that which has been given to us must be possessed by faith. Amen. amen. Who is excited about possessing by faith? Amen. Remember, we are in a different covenant, though, you know, we have these two different covenants, the one that is the Old Testament and the New Testament covenant. Amen. Um, the one in the Old Testament, we talked about that last week. Um, well, we talked mostly about the New Covenant, the one, the grace dispensation. By faith, we have access into God's grace. You know, by faith, we take possession of everything that God has given us. Amen. So I wanted to do a comparison. Amen. Because we looked at the covenant of promises in the grace dispensation. We are in um, where everything is given to us. By faith, we have to receive by faith. We have access into God's grace by faith. Amen. We take possession of everything by faith. Now, in the old covenant, the people had to go in to take possession. The, you know, God is the same God. He never changes yesterday, today, and forever. The promise to Israel, though, is a pattern that I want us to see. It's, it's seen throughout, you know, the story of Israel entering into the promised land. Now, if you remember, back last year or so, two years ago, I told you, I said, the Bible, when you look at it, it's written to three groups of people. It's written to the children of Israel. It's written to the Gentiles. And it's written to the church. Okay, and so um, we are, you know, the church, uh, and then there's the Gentiles and the children of Israel. But then if you look at the two, there's two covenants, and um, one is the old covenant, one is the new covenant. But it's still the same God who ch never changes. The, he says, I will not alter that which I've said, I've uh, spoken out of my mouth. Amen. So I change not. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. There's one covenant which you had to do, 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 do works. And then there's the other one, which is grace covenant, which is the New Testament covenant, which must be possessed by faith. Okay, so today I want us to look at, I want a, a comparison and I want you to understand and I'll close by tell, showing you why I need you to see both and why we need to understand both. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. Okay, so let's quickly go through this. Um, so the promise to Israel. So this pattern can be seen in the story of Israel entering the promised land. So we are going to be looking at the promised land. So let's start with Numbers chapter 13. So we know about how Genesis, how Abraham started off and everything. So we're here where they've now crossed the Red Sea. So we're in chapter 13. Let's look at verse 1 and 2. And the Lord said to Moses, Send men to explore and scout out for yourselves the land of Canaan which I give to the Israelites. From each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man, everyone a leader or head among them. So Moses, by the command of the Lord, sent scouts from the wilderness of Paran, all of them men who were heads of the Israelites. Okay, so before we go on, go on, we see that it's the Lord saying to Moses, send men to explore and scout out for yourselves the land of Canaan, 
which I, the Lord, give to the Israelites. So God is telling Moses to send men into a land which has been given. So the question, this is not, you know, it's, it's not three questions. I just have three questions and I need answers. Has the land been given? Yes. Okay. Has everything in the land been given? Yes. Has that word come out of the mouth of God? Yes. Okay. Is that a done deal? Yes. yes. It's a done deal. So what's lacking? Pray. Action. Action. She said it. Action is what is lacking. What, is, what still needs to happen? The land has been given, okay? The word has come out of the mouth of God. It is a done deal. The lacking, what is lacking, what still needs to happen is they, the children of Israel, have to go in and possess the land. Does that, you know, sound like uh, something, some people... Uh, is this familiar? Deja vu? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. <laughs> is this too soon to start? <laughs> is it too soon to get into your business? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All righty then. So we see that here. Moses, of course, he sends out the spies. Right. So the spies were sent out. We will read through all. We don't need to read through all that. But verse 25, the spies went, they saw, they saw the land, they returned after 40 days, and they give a report of what they saw there. They came into the land, it surely flows with milk and honey. This is the fruit, they brought back evidence. And then they start, verse 28, how the people who dwell there are strong, the cities are fortified, very large. Moreover, we saw, they see with their eyes, the sons of Anak. Great stature and courage. Amalek dwells in the land. Amalek was an enemy. You have to study about who Amalek was and what God told them about Amalek. We see that Amalek is there. The ites, all the ites there in the hill country. And, you know, Caleb quieted the people before Moses. Come on, let's go up at once and possess it. Moses, uh, Caleb is using God's language, possessing it. We are well able to conquer. Conquer is important. You underwrite, uh, underline that or highlight it. His fellow scouts, but his fellow scouts said, no, we're not able to go up against the people of Canaan. They're stronger than we are. Underline stronger. They, so they brought Israelites an evil report of the land, which they had scouted out, saying that the land which we went out, went to spy it out, is a land that devours. Look at the language they use, its inhabitants. When you look, at, when you look up devour in the dictionary, it means to eat up greedily or to destroy. I have it in my notes in my Bible here. So they're saying, this land which we went to spy out is a land that eats up greedily or destroys its inhabitants. Huh? And all the people that we saw in there are men of great stature. So I'm sitting here thinking as I'm studying, like, wow. So they're saying, really, God took us out of Egypt, a bad place, and he's bringing us to a land that will destroy the people, its inhabitants. Really? This God is bringing us to a place that will eat us up greedily. And all the people we saw, everything is about what they saw. Mm, 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 mm. It's what they saw, not what God saw or what God said. It's about what they saw. It's what they saw in the natural. And there we saw, verse 33, they continue, eh? There we saw the Nephilim, the giants, evil demonic things, and saw the sons of Anak who came from the giants. These are, again, the Nephilim, and I don't want to even go into deliverance, but these are, we, we do, <laughs> eh, they come. This Nephilim is actually, okay, I'm not going to go there because then we are going to go into deliverance. But Nephilim is actually, um, hey, let me leave it alone. And who come from the giant? Look it up. Nephilim. <laughs> uh, spirit husbands. And then I'll leave it alone. And sons of Anak, who come from giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Everything they report is about what they saw. Never did they spend time 
to see what God saw or what God said. It was about what they saw. Never once did they see what God saw. Okay, leave that one alone. So the spies saw the land, but they also saw giants. Even though the Lord had given them the land. Now, God did tell them that he gave them the land. And we'll see as we go forward that God, I mean, God told them he gave them the land. That was it. He had, they didn't wait for God to give them the next instructions. The first instruction was, I've given you the land. They didn't ask for further instructions or they didn't wait for the next memo or email to come from God. They just started shaking in their boots before they heard the rest of the report. All God said is, hey, I've given you this land. They saw, and before they could hear the final report from God, they start seeing what now they're seeing and making decisions based on what they are seeing. Mm, 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 mm. Am I talking to somebody today? You see, I'm giving you this land. You see problems. Instead of seeing possibilities, you are seeing problems. Hmm? God, I can't quit my job. Huh? How am I going to get paid? <laughs> now I'm talking about myself. Huh? That was three years prior to my quitting. What? Lord, how am I going to eat? I want you to step out and do ministry, healing ministry. <gasps> Who's going to feed me? That was me doing exactly what they did. Seeing problems instead of seeing possibilities. This is exactly what they did. Maybe somebody out there watching, that's exactly where you are today. Because they saw, the spies saw the land. Yes, the land is there. But they also saw giants. Even though the Lord had given them the land, there, there was enemies that had to be defeated. They are not seeing that they had to defeat enemies. Then they're just seeing, oh my God, oh my God, there's giants, there's Nephilim, there's all of this, there's all that, there's problems. This land, it devours its inhabitants. Mm -hmm. Who? Eh, now you go the Nigerian route. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, God forbid. Oh. <laughs> I reject that one. No. <laughs> I'm telling you, we'll go African on you quick. <laughs> uh, that, that one, I reject that one. That one is evil. This is exactly the evil report that they brought back to the rest of the crowd. Who do you think is going to go when you're going to tell them? Let me tell you, you're painting this picture. This land, it devours its inhabitants. <laughs> Sister Joyce, if I come and tell you, <laughs> this land, it devours its inhabitants. And I'm painting this picture. And you know the word devours. Huh? You look it up. It eats up greedily. Are you going to set foot there? Absolutely know. not. You won't uh, look at Reverend Pauline. The way she... <laughs> <laughs> She's right there. Please. <laughs> Who, who's packing there? But absolutely oh, not. That must be from the devil. <laughs> I'm telling you. So the way we are all reacting in here, can you imagine this three million who are being told by this ten that this land, and yeah, there's fruit, but you won't eat it, you won't enjoy it because this land it devours. <laughs> you should when you read the Bible, you should look at these words. And all the people we saw there, they didn't say some of the people we saw. All the people we saw in there are giants. Mm -hmm. And us, huh? we saw the Nephilim. Yeah? We saw the sons of Anak. These are giants who come from the giants. Huh? And we were in our own sight. Grasshoppers. Now think about a grasshopper and look at a giant. Huh? What? And so we were in their sight. That's the report they're bringing back after 40 days and people have been waiting. <laughs> and now this one's like, hey, hey, oh, I reject that one. And there's two, two guys, two guys. Now, what did these people do? 
they bought that not only did they bring back a report i want to show you let's go into into verse 14 uh, chapter 14 and all the congregation cried out with a loud voice hey who wouldn't <laughs> because why were they crying think about it we've journeyed yeah? we've gone through trials and tribulation from Egypt, we thought we were delivered from taskmasters. After all these 400 years, we've suffered, suffered. Now we were celebrating that God delivered us. We left there with all this wealth. God gave us favor, and we saw how God drowned the Egyptians. We were like, praise Jesus. Then we were in the wilderness, and now, oh my God, we've traveled. We've crossed over, and here we are. Now we see this promised land, and God is saying, go into this land. Now we're getting excited. Finally, we are going to settle down. Oh, praise Jesus. Now you're coming back and telling us what? This is where we are going. This is where God wants us to go. Come on. We would not cry. They're saying all of the, con the, all the congregation, all, with the exception of two men, the congregation, all of them are crying, with the exception of Caleb and Joshua. All of them are crying with a loud voice, and they wept that night. <laughs> you know why they wept? Because these people brought a report of fear. And they brought fear to them. So all night long they are weeping with a loud voice. This is after 10 of the 12 spies come back with their negative report. People are wailing that night. Hmm? Have you ever wept at night because of an enemy? Have you ever stayed up all night knowing that God had something for you but some fat giant? was in the way something was in the way and you get your eyes off of what god has said and what god had said hmm? and so, you know here's what god had said because this is important i want you to notice these people when we go back to chapter 13 verse 1 god said to moses send men to explore and scout out for yourselves. Because you see, God, and the reason why God said for yourselves, because God said, I've given you a good land. I'm giving you this land to possess it. Now you are here at the edge of the promised land. Send the men for yourselves to scout it out, to check out the land that I'm giving you. Okay? Send the men out for yourselves to scout out the land which I give to the Israelites. God has said this is a good land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Now you send out these foolish men. Yeah, I was going to call them idiots. Uh, but <laughs> you send these out and they come back. They've taken their eyes off of what God has said. That this is a land that I'm giving you, which is a land filled with milk and honey. A land that is good. It's flowing. They come back with what they saw. Nobody sent you to go and see what you are seeing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Nobody in the, in the way God sent you. Nobody said go and see what you need to see. God said go and see the land which I am giving you. When did God say go and see what you're seeing? God said, go and see the land that I give to the Israelites. And yet they took their eyes off of what God is giving them and they are seeing what they want to see. Yeah. Yeah. Am I talking to somebody here today? Yeah. God said, go in and possess the land which I give you. Oh, but God, have you seen the big hairy leg giant? Don't you think God knows that the big hairy leg giant is in there? Don't you think he knows that? And here you are, staying up all night thinking about the giant, rather th than thinking about the promise of God. Hmm. Verse 2 and ver 14, 
chapter 14. And the, all the Israelites grumbled and deplored their situation, accusing Moses and Aaron, to whom the whole congregation said, Would that we had died in Egypt, or that we had died in this wilderness. So the next thing that happens is they complained. Now, this is a place of desperation. When people start complaining, it's they've reached the place of desperation. And when you reach a place of desperation, this is what drives people to commit suicide. Mm. <laughs> Verse 3. Why does the Lord bring us to this land to fall by the sword? Our wives and our little ones will be a prey. Is it not better for us to return to Egypt? Now they're, they're deflecting blame. Now this is God's fault. You see? <laughs> Verse 4, and they said to one another, let us choose a captain and return to Egypt. Now let's get rid of this guy, this Moses. Let's get rid of him. Let's get another guy. Let's choose another captain. Because this one, he wants us to be devoured greedily and to be eaten up. He wants us to be devoured. No, this one is not hearing from God. Let's get rid of him. Huh? You see what's happening here? They've taken their eyes off of the word, the promise. <laughs> huh? Uh, uh, verse 8, you know, all this, Joshua and Caleb, I'm telling you, it's just, they're renting their clothes. They're like, really, people? Come on. <laughs> Let's go to verse 8. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land flowing with milk and honey. This is now Joshua and Caleb, the two people. Now, verse 8 is interesting. It says, if the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land. Stop right there and highlight that. Highlight that or underline it. Why is it? Why am I saying that? That word land there. Take it out and fill in the blank. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land. Blank. He will bring us my healing. He will bring us my victory. He will bring us my relationship. He will bring us my financial breakthrough. He will bring us my husband. He will bring us my wife. He will bring us my fruit of the womb. Whatever it is you want. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us whatever it is you need. And said, give it, and, and give it to us, a land but whatever it is you need flowing with milk and honey. Are you getting it? This is what that means there. Land is a representation of the thing that you need right now in your life. For them it was land. For us in the covenant of promises, it's whatever the promise is that you need. Verse 9. Only do not rebel against the Lord, neither fear the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their defense and the shadow of protection is removed from over them, but the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Oh, that's so powerful. Well, I would suggest that the crying the night before and the complaining is rebellion. Mm -hmm. Then these two guys, Caleb and Joshua, these were true men of faith. I'll tell you that. Look at what he's saying. Neither fear the people of the land. Don't be afraid of these people. And then he says something which is so interesting. When the Holy Spirit opened my eyes to see this, I was like, wow. I was shaking in my chair. I was like, oh. Even this morning when I was going over my message again in my office, Pastor Vicks found me there. I'm shaking in my chair. It's like, what? I'm like, ooh, I'm exciting myself over my message. This part is where I was. And it's like, what? I'm like, ooh, I'm reading this. I'm just like shaking and excited. Guess what? He said, neither fear the people. Don't be afraid of the people of the land. Why? For they are bread for us. Mm. Do you know what that means? When he says, for they are bread for us, don't fear these people. We will chew them and spit them out. <laughs> when you have bread, you put it in your mouth, chew it up, and you can spit it out. I'm like, yes, they are bread for us. Look, it's the way they are seeing it. Their perspective. For them, it's like they can be giants, but we are going to eat them and chew them out. We will spit them out. Come on. We can chew up these guys. We can spit them out. We are well able. 
Hallelujah. Oh my God. And then you know why he's able to say that? He says their defense and their shadow of protection is removed from over them. Come on, people. Underline that, highlight it, put a circle around that, put stars around that. You need it. You need it. You need it. I'm telling you, their defense and the shadow of protection is removed from over them. Oh my God. Oh my God. What? 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 Their, their defense and the shadow of protection is removed from over them. But the Lord is with us. Oh, oh. Oh, let me tell you, whatever enemy you are facing, it has already been defeated on the cross and its protection has departed. Oh my God, it may rear its ugly head around you from time to time and it may roam around like a lion, but its protection has departed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh my God, you guys are not hearing. Mm -hmm. These guys may be giants, but their protection, their defense, and their shadow of protection, shadow of protection, has is removed from over them. Yes. They are not protected by anyone or anything. Yes. The Lord is with us. Fear them not. Come on. Ooh. I said, man, the people were not seeing that. The people were fearing the enemy. Instead of them, the enemy fearing them because these guys were protected by God. The enemy had no protection, no covering. And yet the people who had God with them, who had covering, they're the ones who were afraid. Oh, mm, am I speaking to somebody? Mm, am I in somebody's business? Mm, the people are afraid. In which covenant? Uh, these people were in what covenant? Uh, mm, who? Jesus. Some, oh, Jesus. Let me go on. Uh, is this speaking to some? I'm like, this is what? New Testament? Old, Old Testament? Uh, oh, Lord. What? What? <laughs> like, say what, Lord? <laughs> is this New Testament? Old Testament? The people have what? The protection? Uh, uh, fear? Uh, oh, Jesus. Mm. These guys, you mean Joshua and Caleb, were not born again? Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Mm -mm. Lord. Mm -mm -mm. Jesus. It's quiet in this Presbyterian church. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Let me move on. People might leave the church. <laughs> I'm just saying. Deuteronomy 1.8. Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and take possession of the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give to them and to their descendants after them. Again, go in and take possession of the land. Go in and take possession of the land. Go in and take possession of the land. Of the land. Let's go to verse 21. In the same Deuteronomy 1. Behold, the Lord your God has set the land before you. Go up and possess it. You see, as we read these Old Testament verses, think about your promises in the New Testament. Behold, the Lord God has set the promises before you. Go in and take possession of the land. Go in and go up and take possession. You know, did Jesus say the Father? it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom? Well, God says, I have given you all things. I have given you my son, hasn't he? And remember, he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above, according to the power that works in us. Therefore, go in and possess that which God has given. And then if you go back to verse 21, it says, fear not, neither be dismayed. Fear not, fear not. Let's go quickly to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 through 9. I'll read it quickly. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' minister, 
Moses, my servant is dead. Now arise, take his place, go over this Jordan, you and all the people into the land which I'm giving to them, the Israelites. Every place upon the sole of your foot, every place which upon which the sole of your foot shall tread, then have I given to you as I promised Moses from the wilderness and all that, you know, tells him the territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. Be strong, confident, and of good courage, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only you be strong and very courageous that you may do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that you may post, you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law, this covenant of promises, shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it at night, day and night, that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it, for then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong, vigorous, and very courageous. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You see, nothing has changed. The same God who was the God of those people who are not even born again, who's encouraging them to believe in his word, to go in and possess that which has been given, is the same God who recreated us and has given his very nature, given us his very nature. He's given us his very spirit. He's given us his very promises. He's given us his blood. He's given us his name. He's given us his armor. He's given us his weapons. He's given us the keys to the kingdom. He's given us, you know, everything that we need, his promises. I think you and I are in pretty good shape. And he says to go get your inheritance. And we say, but there's giants. But there's problems. And he says, speak to your giants. Tell it, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. He's telling us, take that which is yours. See, see, I have given it to you. Oh, but Lord. Oh, but Lord. Oh, but you know, Lord. Oh, but Lord, you don't understand, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. Listen, people, these things are parallel. These things go very well together. What happened in the Old Testament and what's happening in this new dispensation? Oh, let's go to numbers. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, is the truth all right? Yes. Numbers 33, verse 53. And you shall take possession. You, 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 not they, not somebody else, not Jesus will come and take possession for you. Not the Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit, go to the hospital. Oh, oh, Father in heaven, we pray that this Sunday you will go and visit those people. Oh, Lord, can you go there? No. Oh, Lord, we are praying that you will go to that nation and take them. No. You, 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 that's what it's saying, shall take. Did you not see that? You shall take possession of the land and dwell in it. You shall take possession and dwell in it. For to you I have given the land yes. to possess it. You shall take possession of the promises and partake of them. For to you I have given the promises to possess. <laughs> That's my, that part is not in the Bible. I'm just saying. But you know, I like the New King James Version because it says, you shall dispossess 
the inhabitants of the land and dwell in it. For I have given you the land to possess. When you look up the word dispossess, to deprive someone of land or property or other possessions. Do you know what that means? To dispossess, to deprive someone of land. These inhabitants were dwelling there illegally. It wasn't their land. The land belonged to the children of Israel. So they needed to be evicted. In our grace dispensation, the enemy is living, the enemy is living, is he's, he's, he's using our gifts, the things that God has blessed us with illegally. He needs to be dispossessed. And there you are. Oh Lord, the enemy has done this. The enemy has been busy. Busy doing what? Why are you not dispossessing him? Oh my God. You shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land. What is in our land of promises? What is in our promised land of abundant life in Christ? Now, I can quickly think of three major topics here. There's fear, there's lies, and there's flesh. Mm. Now, you can just about categorize anything that you're going through under the category of fear. You're afraid of something or you believed a lie or you have, you're have you having issues with your flesh. Now, those things are typically what are living in your land of promises. Those are the things that stand in the way. Those are the giants that try to keep you from entering into your inheritance. You're afraid of something, which means you're not walking by faith. You're walking by fear. Lies. The devil is the father of lies. You've believed lies about yourself. You've believed lies about the nature of God. You've believed lies about the nature of your circumstances. And so these strongholds are standing in the way of you entering into your promised land. Right. And then we have the flesh, which is always with us. But we have the spirit of God to put to death the deeds of the flesh. Okay, but those are the enemies that are in the land. Those are the enemies that are keeping us from entering into the abundant life that God has promised for us. Now, people, this is just an uh, introduction. You see, I'm just trying to get our motor running to get us to understand that we can't just lay back and say, God, just bless me. Now, even though, yes, you know, you can do that and you can have an incredible experience with God and, and be blessed and have some, you know, wonderful, wonderful emotional healing take place and so on. But I'll tell you this, in the everyday taking of, of that which has been promised to you and I, I can guarantee you that you're going to have to be involved in that because you have been equipped to be more than a conqueror. And conquerors have to conquer stuff, have to conquer something. You can't say I'm an overcomer and yet you don't, you don't overcome anything. You can't say I'm more than a conqueror, but you're not conquering anything. Amen? Amen. Let's quickly go to Deuteronomy. I'm about to close real quickly. Hallelujah. Is this blessing somebody? Yes. Is this helping you? Yes. I'm telling you, this is it. This is the stuff. You know, if you don't know this, you'll just sit there passively waiting for things to happen to you. And you see that God didn't just want his children of Israel to wait. Yes, he gave them favor when they were leaving, you know, Egypt so that they had stuff when they started out in the promised land. But that's the kind of God we serve. When you have a situation, he will give you favor. But then he's not going to just dump things on you without you having to do something. Right. He will expect you to do something. Hey, I've given you the land. Go in and take possession of it. Mm. You can't sit there and say, okay, but God, I'm just sitting here. You gave it to me last time. I'm just going to wait. He's not going to do that. You need to get up and go in and take possession of that which God has given you. And you know, when I sit back and I'm saying, Lord, how many people, when we go to a cemetery, how many people have left behind the stuff that you gave to them? Wow. How many people are sitting by? You know, I was sitting thinking about, you know, people who just sit by day in and day out, just sitting on their couches, sitting on their, you know, patios, verandas, 
you know, just watching the sun go in and out, come out in the morning and go out in the evening, just sitting there watching cars, people watching, watching cars go by while they're waiting for something to happen. And God is like, go, rise up. Oh, man, watch and see. Let's go to <laughs> Deuteronomy 130. I'm just, you know, I, I, I'm a person who thinks. I like to think about when I'm meditating on stuff and then I start to apply it to my own life and then I start to apply it to the lives of the people out there. I'm like, wow, man. Look, Deuteronomy 130. The Lord your God who goes before you, he will fight for you just as he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. This scripture is telling me that you and I, and not doing this alone. This is not in our own strength. Yep. This is the power of God that's within you. He shall fight for you. Amen. Listen, God is saying, get up and go and uh, go and take possession, but you're not alone. You know, remember the power, the enemy's protection has been has departed. God is right there with you as you are going in. God is right there with you. He shall fight for you. You are not alone. He's going before you, but he needs you to get up. He needs you to do something. He needs you to go in and take possession of that which he has given you. You can't be afraid of the enemy. You can't be crying all night, oh, there's a giant. Oh, my God, there's problems. Oh, my God, just like the people who wept all night because of an evil report. Come on. You can't. Let's go to verse 2, chapter 2, in verse 24, chapter 2. Rise up. Look at that. Rise up. Take your journey. Do you know what rise up, take your journey? Take your journey means lay hold of your journey. Lay hold of your destiny. Come on. You can't sing songs about my destiny all the time. You got to lay hold of it. Take hold of your destiny. Rise up. But the first thing is you got to rise up. Are you rising up? You can't sit by passively. Huh? Come on. It doesn't say. Listen, it says rise up. Take your journey and pass over on the valley of the Arna. And it's telling them which way to go on the valley of the Arna. And then he says, behold, I have given you. I like behold because it means pay attention. I have given into your hand Shihon, oh, the Amorite king of Heshbon and his land. Begin to possess it and contend with him in battle. Oh my God. I was so, I was like, man, I wrote down, I said, it doesn't say just go in and take a look at him and he'll see you and fall over dead. That's not what it's saying. Oh, because God is with me. When I go in there, I look at him and he'll see me and oh, it's her and fall over dead. No, he says, rise up. You got to rise up. You got to take your journey, meaning begin to go in and pass over. And then he says, behold, pay attention. I've given you this person, this king. And he says, and his, and his land, I've given you his land. So you know that it's his land, but I want you to begin to possess it. It's his land and you will need to take dispossess this king hallelujah you need to take possession of his land and he says i want you to contend with him in battle oh this is god sending you into warfare now this is a warfare god is sending you into you are going to take over this land you will need to get into battle with this person go contend with him in battle but you need to remember that his protection has left him yeah. why because god has spoken yeah. <laughs> yeah. god has spoken remember that god has spoken therefore you will win this battle hallelujah yeah. you cannot fear the protection of a diagnosis of cancer has left it because God has spoken. Hallelujah. You are the healed and not the sick. So the protection of a diagnosis of cancer has left it in the name of Jesus. The protection of a diagnosis of whatever ALS has left it because God has spoken. The protection of a diagnosis of HIV or AIDS has left it because God has spoken. I'm saying the protection of a diagnosis of COVID-19 has left it because God has spoken. Hallelujah. You are the healed and not the sick. I am the Lord who heals you. Hallelujah. God has spoken. I am the Lord who takes sick 
sickness and disease away from you. God has spoken. Yes. I am saying, Jesus said, I am the balm of Gilead. I'm saying, I am your healer. God has spoken. Hallelujah. I don't care what sickness, disease, whatever has been spoken over you. God has spoken. Hallelujah. You hear what I'm saying? God has spoken. The protection that was over fear has left because God has not given us the spirit of fear. God has spoken. He says, I have not given you the spirit of fear. Therefore, if you have a spirit of fear, fear has left. The protection over the spirit of fear has departed because God has spoken. Hallelujah. Is anybody getting stirred up this morning? Jesus, the things that have, uh, are stealing from you, they come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Well, today, I have good news for you. Come on. Their protection has left. Amen. Because God has spoken. Amen. Jesus said, I came so that they might have life yes. in abundance to the full till it, till it overflows. God has spoken. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No more stealing. No more killing. Hallelujah. No more dying. Hallelujah. Yeah. God has spoken. I'm telling you, the enemy's protection has departed Amen. because God has spoken. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is anybody excited Hallelujah. today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Let's quickly go to Deuteronomy 7. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let's read verse 1 and 2. When the Lord your God, when the Lord your God brings you into the land which you are entering to possess and has plucked away many nations before you, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, all these ites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. And when the Lord your God gives them over to you and you smite them and, you, and then you must utterly destroy them. You shall make no covenant with them or show mercy to them. Real quickly, this is so powerful. We know from the previous verses that they must first contend, but God does the work. You see, he says, when the Lord your God brings you into the land. So it's a done deal. God is bringing you into the land. <laughs> There's no question about it. You are entering into the land which you are going to possess. Okay? And he tells you which you are entering to possess. I like the fact that, and has plucked away. Ooh, and like God will pluck them away. <laughs> he will pluck them away. But he will only do that when you enter to possess. Right. As you are possessing, God is plucking. Ooh, yeah. You are possessing. Look, go to the garden and start plucking and see. When you're plucking your weeds out, think about God plucking them. These ites. When you are in the land, all your enemies, consider your enemies as ites. You are, you are possessing, God is plucking. You are possessing, God is yeah. plucking. Each portion of land you're possessing, the promises, each promise you're possessing, God is plucking the ites out of there. Hallelujah. Yeah. Even the ones that seem greater and mightier than you, God is plucking. Yes. And then he says, when the Lord gives them over to you, oh my God, you, will, you must, you, you, and you smite them. To smite, you know, in my notes here in my Bible, to smite is to strike them with a firm blow. Yeah. So when God gives them to you, you must strike them with a firm blow. Not just slap. Strike with a firm blow. Mm -hmm. Then you must utterly destroy. Don't have, it even says, you shall not make any covenant. So don't enter yeah. into partnerships with them, make covenants with them. Mm -hmm. And you will not show them mercy. You see that? Mm -hmm. uh, we, we don't even want to go further. Don't make marriages with them. and eh? <laughs> Don't. Don't even go further. Mm -hmm. Just read on your own. I'm not, I don't have time for that today. But, and then it says because God is, the, the, God is in you. He does the work because the greater one lives in you. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Let me quickly go to, verse, uh, to chapter 11. I'm telling you, I'm concluding. Very quickly. I want to show you why I'm reading all these verses. Verse 11, verse, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, chapter 11, verse 23. It'll make sense just now. Then the Lord will drive out all these nations before you, and you shall dispossess 
nations greater and mightier than you. So now I like this part. Then the Lord will drive out all these nations before you. Before you, meaning you've got to go in there or it won't be before you. Right. He's not going to do it unless it's right before you. You've got to step into this. You see, greater nations are mightier than yourselves. In other words, your enemies, no matter how big they look, the diagnosis, no matter how severe it sounds, the financial challenge, no matter how big it looks, the relationship issues, no matter how big they look, no matter how much bigger than, than you they look, God is bigger than them and he has spoken and he lives in you. Go in and possess it. Hallelujah. Go in and possess it. Amen. In verse 25 in chapter, uh, we, did we read 25? No. There shall no man be able to stand before you. The Lord your God shall lay the fear and the dread of you upon all the land that you shall tread as he has said to you. Hallelujah. In other words, you've got to tread upon that land. But as you tread upon it, the fear of you gets into the hearts of your enemies. Now, as long as you stay home and stay passive, the fear of you stays there. But the minute you get up, the minute you rise up, uh, amen, the minute you get stirred up, like I said, you know, about the time of prayer, when you get stirred up inside of you, you know, when, you know, uh, the, the, the spirit stirs, gets stirred up inside of you and you're slicing and dicing in the spirit. I'm telling you, oh my God, the spirit of God goes inside of you. you the, the spirit of God goes, you know, from you into the heart of your enemy and, and you begin to take your promised land in the spirit. You begin to post possess it. This is what it's talking about here. The fear leaves you and it enters into the enemy. And the enemy and his cohorts begin to flee. Mm. <laughs> Joshua 10, quickly. Joshua 10. Joshua 10, 25. It tells us here, Joshua 10, 25. Verse 25, Joshua said to them, fear not, nor be dismayed. Be strong and be of good courage. For thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom you fight. Not against whom you weep. Like what they did all night weeping. Uh -uh. Against whom you fight. Against whom you fight. God will go before you. He will do this. He will do this. Joshua said, fear not, nor be dismayed, be strong. For thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom you fight. Joshua 23. Hallelujah. And then verse 9. He says in verse 9. Uh, for the Lord has driven out. This is past test. The Lord has driven out from you. Be, be, from before you. Great and strong nations. And as for you, no man has been able to stand, withstand you to this day. God has already done it for you before. Why are you stopping now? He will do it again. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And any tongue that shall rise against you shall be condemned. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. God has done it before you. And he will do it again for you. And no man has been able to stand with you, withstand you to this day. Why are you afraid? Fear not. Go in and possess the land. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. oh, Jesus. This is what Joshua said. And the last scripture. Praise God. Are you stirred up? So 1 Corinthians 10. Let me read this quickly from this way. So I don't want to read it in here. I'll just read it in here. This is why. 1 Corinthians 10. This is why I read all this. My dear fellow believers, you need to understand that all our Jewish ancestors who walked through a wilderness long ago were under the glory cloud and passed through the waters of the sea on both sides. They were all baptized into the cloud of glory, into the fellowship of Moses, and into the sea. They all ate the same heavenly manna and drank water from the same spiritual rock that traveled with them. And that rock was Christ himself. Yet God was not pleased with most of them. And their dead bodies were scattered around the wilderness. Now all these things serve as types and pictures for us. Lessons that teach us not to fail in the same way by callously craving worthless things and practicing idolatry as, of, uh, as some of them did. For it is written, the people settled into their unrestrained revelry with feasting and drinking. Then they rose up and became wildly out of control. Neither should we commit sexual immorality as some of them did, which caused the death of 23,000 on a single day. 
nor should we ever provoke the Lord, as some of them did, by putting him to outrageous tests that resulted in their death from snake bites day after day. And we must not embrace their ways by complaining, grumbling with discontent, as many of them did and were killed by the destroyer. All the tests they endured on their way through the wilderness are symbolic picture, an example that provides us with a warning so that we can learn through what they experienced. For we live in a time when the purpose of all the ages past is now completing its goal within us. So beware if you think it could never happen to you, lest your pride becomes your downfall. This is why I read all these scriptures. Forefathers speaks of the children of Israel, the giants, the flesh, lust, lusting after carnal things, evil things, if you read it from this version. Um, these are things that will steal your inheritance. Murmuring, complaining, gossiping, criticism, complaining, all that stuff that we saw. Um, verse 11, in, in, in here and there, now these things befall them by way of figure, example, warning to us. They are written to admonish and fit us for the right action by good instruction. We in those days, we in which whose days the ages have reached their climax, including um, their consummation and in concluding period. In other words, all these verses we read in the Old Testament of, about possessing the land are written for our admonition. They are written for us now. It's not just some story we can read and let go. These things have been shared with us so that we can take heart and see that if God stood with them under a worse covenant, how much more will he be with us under the best covenant? Yes. So these things is why we need to understand that we have the best covenant, but we cannot let pride. We cannot, you know, just do things anyhow. We cannot sit by passively and think that, oh, well, you know, we don't have to do anything if they we're required to go in and take possession of the land. Our land is a land of promises. We need to go in and take possession of our promises, of our land. It's been given to us, but we need to use our faith to possess that which has been given to us. And so we can't have excuses. We can't say, well, there's giants in the land. Well, the devil is busy. Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh you have, you know, well, I'm an overcomer. Uh, what are you overcoming? I'm more than a conqueror. What have you conquered? You know, you can't let the devil bamboozle you. You can't allow me to say, come up. You can't let the devil bamboozle you. You can't let, you know, the devil defeat you. You can't, you know, murmur and complain as they did. You know, oh, well, you don't know what's going on in my life. Uh, well, go in and possess the land. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. You know, take authority. Jesus has given you power and authority. You know, take authority. Take your stuff. Rise up. Take your journey. We are seeing all these things. So what's the excuse? We have no excuse. Jesus says, I've already overcome. Be of good cheer. Stop murmuring and complaining. This is the year of shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. So what more do you want? Take uh, go in, rise up, take possession of your promises. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Be blessed. Amen. Amen. Have you been blessed today? Yes. Amen. Oh, you don't sound blessed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 There are giants in the land. We are going to take up our Thanksgiving offering this morning, our tithes and offerings. Our church members, uh, prepare your offerings and your tithes this morning. In Genesis 26, verse 12, Genesis 26, verse 12, the Bible says, Then Isaac sowed seed in that land and received in the same year a hundred times as much as he had planted, and the Lord favored him with blessings. Amen. Amen. Even though it was a time of famine, but Isaac still sold and got a hundredfold return. So even though we're going through this pandemic, some people have lost jobs, some people, their hours have been cut, and you, you can still sow in the midst of what's going on. So don't withhold your sowing, because God uh, loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Amen. Let's go also to Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Malachi 3, verse 10, the Bible says, 
Bring all the tithes, the whole tenth of your income, into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And prove me now by it, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Amen. Amen. We are also going to go to Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Very, very familiar scripture. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. The Bible says, give the gifts will be given, will be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over with a pour into your pouch by the bosom of your robe used as a bag. For with the measure that you deal with, the measure that you use when you uh, confer benefits on others, it will be measured back to you. The King James Version Bible just says, Give and it shall be given unto you a good measure, pressed down and shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you met the word, met with her, it shall be measured to you again. Amen. Amen. So this morning I'm just encouraging everybody that don't withhold um, from giving because as you saw, even during this time of pandemic, you will still reap a hundred fold because every time you sow a seed, you should expect a harvest from it. Amen. Amen. So this morning we're going to expect a, 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 a harvest. Amen. We're expecting a good measure pr harvest press down harvest shaken together harvest and running over harvest Amen. that men will give unto us this week as we go out in the name of jesus Amen. so let's just pray for the offering this morning heavenly father we just thank you for this uh, this opportunity to give this morning we thank you for our tithes and offerings we, co we co commit them into your hands. Yes. Let them be a sweet-smelling sacrifice unto you, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you because we are tithers. Yes. Tithers, the, the devourers rebuke for our sex in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you that because we give, it shall be given back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. That men will give unto us in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Spirit of the living God. We thank you that these tithes and offerings... Uh, we, co we, we, the, the, we command them to go, to grow, and to multiply. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Reverend Pauline.
May he watch and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and enlighten you. May he be gracious and kind. May he be merciful, giving you favor. May he lift up his approving countenance upon you and give you peace, tranquility of heart, and life continually. May the name of the Lord be upon you. You are blessed. Amen. Amen.